दसन कांति चूने सहित लीव आयुष दंता लेते दत्तुल एति प्रश्न 10 एक वालकाई The high level event on global climate action of the COP27 or the United Nations Climate Change Conference was held in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt today addressing the event which was attended by the heads of state across the world President Ranil Wickremesinghe called on the developing nations to deliver on their pledges on climate financing which is essential to developing countries to tackle climate change Yet for climate action to be successful wide ranging measures to complement the UNFCCC and the Paris agreement must be pursued the lack of capacity is the biggest obstacle to the implementation of climate action plans therefore capacity building is vital in this regard to overcome this obstacle we propose to establish an international climate change university in sri lanka with an ancillary institute in maldives that will be the first of its type this seat of learning can be a transdisciplinary global center for green and blue studies for scientists environmentalists researchers policy makers development practitioners and of course students the world over to interchange knowledge transcending national and disciplinary boundaries the envisage climate change university will offer both short term courses and postgraduate academic awards to build capabilities on the mitigating and adapting to climate change the university also expedite the skills of the new generations to deliver the political economic social cultural and digital transformation required to prevent a 1.5 centigrade world it would be the vehicle to enlight climate change challenges and prospects domestically the collaboration of multilateral institutions and organizations such as the commonwealth world bank and the adb amongst others will be sought for the establishment for the institute of high learning making it a multi stakeholder partnership transcending national boundaries it's my hope that sri lanka's proposal will receive extensive support and endorsement from the international community regrettably the ground reality is that the fossil fuel based industrialized countries of g7 and g20 who have been the main promoters of green hydrogen are now backtracking to use fossil fuel In the last year carbon dioxide emissions increased by 2 billion metric tons such double standards are unacceptable developed nations should be giving leadership to overcome climate challenges rather than abdicating their responsibilities it is no secret that climate financing has missed the target it's ironic that the 100 billion dollars pledged annually have not been available in the coffers to finance climate challenges These countries who are also on both sides of the Ukraine war seem to have no qualms spending for a war which will finally exceed 350 billion dollars a conflict waged purportedly for security interests of the combatants the only security at stake is food insecurity exacerbated to levels not experienced before the war expectedly it has led to the curtailing of much required climate financing pledged by these very same countries why do we need this funding it is known fact that the practice of colonialism transferred the rich resources of asia and africa to europe and were used to industrialize their countries we became poor from this plunder this unbalanced in industrialization of the developed economies is also the root cause of climate change the consequence of which we the poor countries are forced to suffer our problems are augmented due to the absence of adequate funding therefore those in south are facing a double jeopardy struggling to develop economically while fighting to protect the living standards of our population <coughs> It is therefore imperative that the developed countries deliver on their pledges in Glasgow by doubling their funding.